All right, so welcome to a nighttime edition of DIY with Mr. Sally. And we're going to be working tonight to create that um, DIY turntable. So we've been working on some product lighting, and what I'd like us to be able to do is to do like a 360 um, shot. And we're going to use this turntable to go inside of our DIY light box that we created about a week or so ago. So we're just gonna need some basic supplies. So the basic idea is, um, we talked a little bit about this today in class, we're gonna need some sort of a container. And then we need a piece of just scrap cardboard. So this is actually one of the panels that I cut out on the side of my, um, out of my DIY light box because I knew that I was gonna end up using it later. So I still have that piece around. And we're just gonna need some scissors, we need a thumbtack and probably some glue, maybe some white paper, things like that. So some basic supplies. and. So what we want to do is we need to create basically a, a circle. I think a circle will work best so that the edges are soft as it turns around inside of our um, inside of our light box. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of paper here, this construction paper, I'll move this out to the side. And we want it as large as possible so that depending on what our different um, products are that we want to put on there, we've got some space, right? But you know it can't be too heavy because obviously this is just made out of cardboard. If you want to push things further and do things a little more advanced and take the idea, again, with all these DIY projects, the idea is that I'm presenting a way to do it, right? There are hundreds of ways to do it. And I want you guys to be innovative and look, what supplies do I have around the house? What skills do I have? What could I do, you know, that maybe pushes it further or does something different, right? So maybe you know how to use wood and you want to make something out of wood instead of cardboard. By all means, go ahead, be creative, do whatever is going to work best for you. I'm just presenting a solution of how we could go about doing this without having to go out and buy, you know, a $50 Lazy Susan or a photographic one that could run several hundred dollars for something that's auto um, advance and those sort of things. So let's just jump in here. Um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we need to make basically a circle in here. And so what I'm going to do is just, I like simple solutions, right? We need a 45 degree angle. I like to take a piece of paper and fold it, you know, corner to corner and use that as our 45, right? Simple solutions. So we just need a little small piece of cardboard and I'm not going to be able to use this part anyway. So I'm just going to cut that off to start with. And then basically what I want to do is figure out kind of where is like, I need a center point, right? And so there's several ways we could go about doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and make this to be eight and a half by 11 uh, or, you know, around there so that my actual circle will be eight and a half by eight and a half or fairly close to that because that's the size of a piece of paper. So using that size, I think will be kind of manageable. So I went and grabbed a white sheet of paper. And let's just take a quick look, you know, kind of about where that's going to be. And I'm just gonna put kind of a rough mark on here, you know, just so I kind of know about where my eight and a half by 11 is gonna be. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold it kind of corner to corner. Um, again, this isn't going right down the middle, but I'm trying to get right to those edges. So we have that long dimension. If you have a ruler handy, that'd probably be even easier. I don't have a ruler handy, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. So, and this doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just gonna, I just want a basic idea of where is my center. All right, so there's basically my center point. And then again, my piece of paper will fit on there. And so when I trim it, it'll give me a nice kind of large circle. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna be able to draw a, a circle basically to this edge out here. So what I'm gonna do is make myself a quick little tool um, that's gonna be about the size that I need. So I'm just gonna take a small piece of this. And the basic idea is I want my outside edge to be where my circle is going to go, right? So it can go all the way kind of around that outside. And uh, I'm, so I'm just going to take my push pin and we'll be using this again later. I'm just going to put it right about where that center X is going to be. So I'm just going to put it right to here. And then what I want is actually to go through that center point. Yeah. So. We can see now that this edge is kind of right out to the edge. And what I want to be able to do is I'm just going to create a little notch here and that's going to allow me to be able to put my pin right in that spot. So I'm just going to make just a little, kind of like a V. And 
again, I'm not looking for perfection, but you can do these same things in, in other ways if that works better for you. But again, I'm gonna put this back in our little X spot. And then what I wanna be able to do then is I'm just gonna kinda of keep my finger here. That'll keep this from popping out. I'm gonna place my pen here and I'm just gonna draw a circle. So there we go. And then again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a much better circle than if I tried to freehand a circle, right? And that's really all we were gonna do with that part. We'll be using the thumbtack again a little bit later. So I'll just go ahead and remove that for now. So then what I'm gonna do is so that I only have to cut once, I'm gonna go ahead and mount my paper. So um, you can see it comes a little bit to the inside, which is good, because that way I've got a little bit of extra space. And so uh, again, you know, and we're looking from this corner to this corner, so maybe I can put a little mark on here, you know, about where that is, just so I know, you know, that this is the corner that I want that paper to go into. Right, so this is where the paper's gotta go. And, I'm just going to remove this tape really quick just because I don't want it to actually cause wrinkling on my paper. Now there's lots of ways we can do this next step. I'm going to be basically just gluing on a piece of paper onto here. So use whatever you have available, right? If, if you don't have tape or you don't have glue and you've got tape, you know, whatever you've got to do. Um, but, you know, I think something like a glue stick should work just fine. Or, you know, I think white glue might be a little bit too wet where it's going to bubble or wrinkle. Um, if you do things that use like Mod Podge and you have that around the house, or you've got like a spray glue, you know, always just work with whatever you have. So I'm going to use a glue stick. And I'm actually, because I don't want to wrinkle this, I'm going to actually glue the glue onto the cardboard because that's more um, sturdy. And I just want to get, you know, fairly good coverage all the way around. So I'm just going to kind of make my outside edges to start with. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then just, you know, work my way into the spaces. I do like the purple sometimes because I can see where I've gone and where I've glued. But um, any type will work. And again, I'm just going to kind of try to go through there relatively quickly. Fill that space. Good enough. So now, we, now we're just gonna get our paper glued in place. What I like to do is just kinda give it a slight edge, you know, so it's lifting up from one side so it doesn't like buckle in the middle. And then once it's kind of in place, then just kinda work across from one edge and over. That way you don't get bubbles in the middle. If you just flop it down and then you end up with a little bit of a gap, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have you know, a little bubble and wrinkles. And we want it to be, we're trying to create something that's gonna be seamless, right? We don't wanna see the edge of this. Um, and so we wanna be able to um, keep it as, as clean and tight as we can. So nicely glued on. All right, so then once that's in place, we just need to cut out our circle. And if you wanna do this with an X-Acto blade instead, you know, use whatever tool works the best for you. Also, just gonna maybe do some outside cuts just so that there's a little less material to start with. I'll make it a little easier to get around that edge. All right, so there's our white surface. And again, um, now we can kind of see where the push pin was before, but if we wanted to, we could go ahead and kind of re push that through. Yeah, again, that'll just allow us to know where it is from that top side as well. Then what we're gonna be doing is um, we're gonna go ahead and, and basically be attaching it directly onto the lid of this. And so, you know, doesn't have to be perfect. So again, you know, we may want to just go ahead and put this through the top part here. We could look, if we wanted to try to center it, we could kind of eyeball up from this side. It might be a little easier to figure out exactly where, you know, center is, or at least get it pretty close, and then kind of, you know, hold it in place. And then we can just press the rest of the way down. 
Now we'll have to double check and see if that's made it all the way through our lid. So we may want to go ahead and, you know, just double check. It looks like it was kind of pushing through there. But I might have to actually like, you know, get through there and really pop it through. Now, what we need is for this to be able to kind of like free spin, right? And it looks like it's holding on pretty well and it doesn't want to like pop off of there. If you end up having issues and you're feeling like, oh, it's going to come out of here, there's a couple of things you could try. Um, you know, you could use something on the back that it kind of pushes into. Think of like a, like a backing to an earring. Not that I have any experience with earrings, but um, we might be able to take like an old eraser or something. Maybe it pushes into it or... Um, you know, we could see about, you know, if this is, you know, maybe like bending it over a little bit so it can't pull out, but I think it's going to stay pretty well, but just if you run into issues, that might be a solution. The other thing is I probably would want to put something in here that's going to help give it some extra weight. So we could fill it with dirt, we could fill it with nails, we could fill it with water, you know, just something that's going to give us a little bit more weight. So it has a little more stability for right now. We don't have to do anything, but there's the basic idea. Um, you know, the other solution, um, you know, there is this part here. So you may want to like paint that with white. You could coat it with paper as well. Use the same technique. Um, you know, you could wait and do it the other way where you could put the pen, push pin through and then attach the white and then you'd have to cut it twice. Um, lots of options. But the basic idea is we need this to be able to rotate. And then what's going to be able to happen is we're going to be able to take our products. I don't know if I have anything sitting all that close. Like, let's say for instance, you know, I wanted to photograph these AirPods or something. Um, I'll go ahead and hold that up for you. Let's see if it'll work. And then, but what should be able to happen in our shoot, let's see if it'll stay right there, is, you know, we're gonna be able to take this and while we're photographing, we're gonna be able to take a picture, take a picture, take a picture. And then again, we'll have a white background and so we should be able to then go around and get a full 360 of that product. There we go. That's our turntable. And so we'll be doing it manually. Um, there are ones that will do them automatically, but um, for our purposes, I think this will work just fine. Um, there is a little bit of a bump to here. So you may want to consider maybe doing like a two ply, maybe you cut two circles and then that way you can attach the first one and then glue the second one on top to put them together. But that will then take up that little part so it can sit flush. Um, and then that way you won't have any sort of a bump or anything like that. So there's, there's lots of ways that you could kind of adjust in and innovate. Um, with this project, you know, and create something that's going to work for you. But the basic idea, you know, is that we need some way to be able to rotate that to, to be able to keep that 360 and that way we can really kind of nail down that one position so it looks like it's just spinning on axis. Because if it's off to the side a little bit um, or we try to actually just physically pick it up and move it, it's going to be all over the place. So um, a turntable is really the way to go. So I'm excited to see what you guys are gonna come up with. Again, this was just one quick idea of how we could create something out of nothing um, to create our DIY turntable, but uh, I'm excited to see what kind of materials you'll use, how you can maybe solve some of those little problems, you know, if we really wanted to get into it a little bit further um, and find ways that will work for you guys. So when you're all done, um, you know, record a flip grid, show me what you've got, Talk about some of the problems you came across, what you know, innovations and things that you did. Show me that it works. And then we're going to be doing a shooting assignment um, today that's going to utilize those as well. All right. Excited to see what you make.